Every year for Christmas, I would get like a small point and shoot camera and I would get a new one every year because within the year I would probably break it by like putting it up on the TV or like doing something without a tripod. I don't know how to categorize my work because I feel like it's not like specifically portraits and it's not specifically landscapes. I feel like it's a lot of, and I also hate the word documentary because that feels like very like news based to me, but I feel like I do do a lot of documentary work, but just kind of documenting my life and not like the news. I don't know, I take, I shoot a lot of landscapes. I do shoot portraits. I kind of just shoot what is in front of me. I do some commercial work for work, but my photos are super colorful and I'm obsessed with light and yeah, like exteriors. Yeah, I take a lot of photos of um, houses in the suburbs and that's what I shot a lot um, growing up and when I lived at home. And so it's different here living in New York, but I shoot a lot of architecture, people, but mostly my friends. I feel with technical skills, I'm very embarrassed by and so insecure about um, because I feel like with photographers, it's always what skills do you know? What equipment do you have? How long have you been doing this? How how much experience do you have to get to this job? I mean, I've never been like ridiculed for it, but inside I've always felt super insecure about the technical skills I've had because I didn't take a photo class before I came to school. And so when I came here to Parsons, I was like, I don't know anything. I'm here to just like learn everything. Um, I don't know, it's, it's tough. I feel like I never had a good camera. I still don't really have a good camera. I shoot on a Canon 70D, which is like whatever. And I usually use the kit lens. Like I don't really care about the equipment that much, which I know breaks a lot of people's hearts because some people are just so tech minded. But for me, it's always been like story and concept and what I see. Um, and that's why I don't mind shooting on my iPhone 8. I shoot a lot of stuff on there and it kind of sucks because sometimes people are like, I want a print of that. And I'm like, oh, it was shot on my iPhone. I I can't, I can't print it out for you. I think a lot of people feel, um, people who don't have a lot of technical skills often feel like they can't make good work. And that's how I felt a lot growing up. I felt like I, I was super inferior and I wasn't really like considered a photographer because I didn't have a nice camera. But I shot a Nike campaign when I was 18 and had no idea what I was doing. Literally no idea. I hired a production assistant, my friend Kim, um, and she was able to like, help me with the technical things, but I knew nothing. And it was just kind of like, I don't know, it's crazy because you think that you have to have like four years of school, a degree, and so much experience to start being respected and paid for your work and for people to respond well. Um, and it does obviously help so much. That's why I'm in school to learn things um, and have a better brain when it comes to technical things. But I think if your concept is strong and your story is strong and you're confident in what in the ideas you have, you just have to you know run with that. And I'm, I still struggle with it. I hate talking about equipment with people because I feel like sometimes I show up on paid shoots and I literally will have like my tiny camera and be like, I'm sorry, this is not like huge and like expensive. I'm just here to do, do my job. Yes, yeah, we're just so weird. It's like graffiti and also pink. We are shooting MXM Tune, some social media photos. She has a show tonight at Babies. It's gonna be really fun. I'm just gonna start snapping, all right? Cute, do you wanna move over here to like, I kind of like this little corner. Yes! But it's like, that's not always the way things have to be. Rest your hands on the table or something? I don't know how, yeah. I just want to see how the light looked. I'm liking the sparkly water. Do you 
sit on the ground. Is that okay? I just want to see what the light looks like on your face. I Okay, I'm gonna switch. You stay there, I'm gonna just switch sides. Honestly, I don't know where all of the color came from. I think that's just what I've always been drawn to. I wish I could shoot in black and white without feeling like hurt. <laughs> I don't know, I think growing up I just, I have like a crazy, stupid, wild imagination. Um, and so as much as I can, you know, reflect that in my work, I don't, I can't even imagine what it would be like to be in like the 1920s and have to shoot like sepia or like black and white. I'd be like, uh, -uh. I'll pick another profession. <laughs> I look for color, but I also kind of have in my head what color I'm going to aim for afterwards. I feel there's color everywhere. And I think a lot of people, not just photographers, but a lot of people in general think that color photography or like really intense photography requires like, you know, like gels or neon lighting. Um, but there is color everywhere if you look for it. And I try and just find it in every day, especially in New York. Like New York is so colorful, but I mean, I think it's a mixture between finding it and also adding it. I mean, post is as important to me as the shooting process. So I think it's a mixture. So when it comes to post and editing, I, I mean, that's another like thing with photographers. A lot of people and a lot of people who don't do photography think that like it's kind of cheating if you are really heavy in post and that photography should just be what you shoot. But I've always approached it as more of like I'm a painter and I'm kind of like painting this image. And so um, I'll shoot something and when I'm shooting it, I know what it looks like in its end result in my head. But if somebody sees it in my camera, they're like, at looks awful and then I put it on my computer and then I mess around with it and then it looks exactly the way I shot it in my head. The most recent personal project I've done was called Death is Orange and it was, I mean it's, I feel like it's ongoing. It is basically a series, an ongoing series of documentation about death and grief and really sad things but I feel like that's a lot of my work or like the personal projects that I've done. I think this is really only my second. It kind of starts with an idea and then transforms itself within a couple of months and then it just is like open-ended. My family friend passed last summer and right after that, I started thinking about doing a series on family and like grief and death and I had this whole idea in my head and then I like set a timeline for myself and I was like, okay, this is when it needs to be done and I need to have everything done and everything written and everything just like completed by then and I didn't have it done because I feel like unless it's like a commercial job it's hard to put like a timeline on my work because I it's so open-ended and a lot of the work that I do is in conjunction with the things I'm experiencing so it's hard to be like oh you need to have experienced all of this and reflected all on all of this by this time so she passed I think in June and then I set myself like a date for August never happened and I kind of forgot about it and then my grandpa passed um, last semester around midterms and I was like okay I have to like pick it back up and so it's just been like an ongoing process it sounds really sad and morbid but it's also just like life and I've just been kind of documenting it as I've experienced all of it moving to New York from the suburbs was really hard and is still really hard um, not only because of like the lifestyle change and being away from home but just the change in content and experience. A lot of my work when I was at home was about the suburbs. Not intentionally, I think it was just kind of what I was experiencing at that time and so that's what I shot. But I grew to really love it and so moving here was kind of hard. I don't really shoot a lot here. When I'm at home, I take my camera everywhere with me and here it's just kind of like I go to school, I do my work. I, and that's it, like I take my camera out when I'm doing a job, which kind of sucks, but I don't know, it gives me more time to think. And it's hard to shoot here, I think, and I'm still trying to find that balance because I'm not a street photographer and I'm not, I don't know, I, I feel like I'm not like a very New York-y photographer, but I do have my phone with me all the time. So if I do see something I wanna shoot, I have my phone, which is good. You can find me on Instagram at uh, s period i l v e r, and my website is just my name, laurentepfer.com. Mm -hmm.